right, well, good afternoon. So this is John in the uh, city of Temecula, Southern California. So um, this is kind of like a part two to the last video. So the problem with this car is my son's car, 1992 Mercedes 300E W124 with a M103 engine. And he has intermittent overheating issues only during heat waves when it gets hot here. Like when I'm, what I mean is hot is like 95 to 100 degrees. <clears throat> and then he's got the AC on and he's in stop and go traffic or through a drive through getting food. Temperature gauge just all of a sudden just goes and just goes up to the top. The last video, um, I really couldn't find anything wrong with the car. There was nothing leaking because the whole cooling system itself um, has been replaced and tested and everything like that. And so I started thinking about it and um, thinking about the uh, auxiliary fans. <clears throat> the low, low speed function comes on when you turn the AC on. Cycles on, off, on, off. It's supposed to do that normal. But then there's a high speed function that never comes on on this car. I've never, I've never heard it. I didn't know what it sounded like. I just figured it, you know, it was working. Um, but I tested it. Supposedly you pull the coolant sensor in the middle of the head. It's a B10-8 sensor, two pin blue. That sensor sends a uh, signal to the climate control unit. Climate control unit turns on the K9 relay in the fuse box. And that's the high speed fan function. Well, this car, that function never works. It doesn't when I, you know, pull the electrical connector on the coolant sensor, key on number two. It's supposed to uh, kind of like a self test thing, it tells you the system's working. Well, it's not. So I spent, I probably put 50, 60 videos, up, you know, on it, but it's just. It's too much, too boring, too long. It'd take five hours of stuff. I've been working on this for about a week and a half. So I'm making it a kind of a shorter video. So um, in this video, you know, I finally figure out that there is something wrong in this car. The wiring, possibly. Uh, possibly climate control unit. I bought a secondhand one off eBay. I have four of them. And they all do the same things. They all heat heat and cool, except for the one from eBay that I just got. I had to return it. It wouldn't turn the compressor on right, so that one was really bad. But anyway, so I said, you know, it can't be the climate control unit. They're all doing the same thing. High, high speed fan function is not, not working. I traced all the wiring and everything. So I, uh, I bypassed uh, the system and uh, got the high speed fan to work, and uh, you'll see it in the video. All right. All right, now the 25th of September, 2023. I've been working on this for a couple of weeks off and on. So let me show you what I've been doing today. Getting into the 90s here in September in Temecula, California. Dang, is it hot in here. Oh my gosh. Okay, so I managed to pull these caps off of the connectors. See how they're, they're, they're made like this. Just stick a screwdriver where you get this, the whole thing undo the whole thing. And then just get a screwdriver and just pry it off in one direction. It comes off, be real careful, tape it real tight right here so they don't all go boing. But anyways, I did this so that I could kind of, kind of identify the colors of the wire and compare them to schematics. Did I have this is again this is a 92 300 EW124 Mercedes Benz. The VIN data card shows that it was delivered in October of 1991. So I would say that this is what this would be a 1991 schematic. Supposedly all these cars are the same from like 1985 to 1990 three they're not 
they have different things, different options. See all those little open spaces. Those are open spaces for switches for different options, like, you know, uh, roll down shades in the back stuff and just weird stuff anyway. So the, so I've been trying to make a schematic of this non-existent. I might post it on Ben's world if I can figure it all out, but, um, I can kind of tell the colors of the wire and with the colors of the wire that helps you identify, you know, what schematic you need. Cause there's so many of them and I've looked at hundreds of them. And a lot of the wires are different. Some of them are the same. This is the right side. This is the left side. This is the side where I, I got, um, I ohmed out. I think it was, uh, it's either, I think it's this gray, gray, brown uh, wire that goes to the fuse box, supposedly. Okay, I got everything connected. Relays are in. I have a ground jumper. We're gonna to touch pin 13, let's see. Uh, yeah, the uh, electrical plug is off of the beat 10 two pin coolant sensor that sends it a signal to this via a blue wire. Okay, no key. This is the trigger wire right here. This brown and gray wire right there. Pin 13. Key on. hear that I've got auxiliary fan turns on so I'm applying a ground to this brown and gray wire that goes to the relay let's try plugging the sensor back in let's see what happens Oh, actually, it was plugged in. So it doesn't matter if it's plugged in or out, I think. Let's see now it's plugged out. So confusing. Yeah, I still get a still get the high speed fan. So that's pin thirteen. Okay. They say it's pin eleven. Pin eleven does nothing, but that one. That one. Oh my God, I can't look at this anymore. Oh man, no. Climate control unit. The push button. It's a little fan. It's pin 13 going out. Goes to the relay. 85 pin. This is the switch here, the point. Gets power from the battery right here. This is over by the battery. It travels and it goes straight to here, pin 30 on the relay, and then pin 87 going out to the fans. So when I put a ground to this wire here, it triggers this whole, triggers the whole thing. Yeah, weird. 
Okay, let me show you the wiring that I did. So, this right here is the right side of the climate control unit. Right, you got all your pins, and this is where I made my little pin out thing that I will put, I'll put up. This is the cover. This cover just, you put a screwdriver right here, just turn it and the cover will pop off. It's easier if you, so these wires don't jump all out. You mix them all up like some people, and that's a nightmare. And plug it in, then take the cover off. You know, this wire here, it's a gray, brown, gray wire, right? Sometimes it looks blue, but it's gray. There, get that back on there like that. So what I did is I uh, cut it right here because this is this is the only out of 24 wires in this connector. In this connector, 24 wires, maybe 25. I think there's 15 on one side, and I, I didn't count, but. Anyways, it's uh, 14 connectors here, 14 connectors there. Two of these are empty. So I don't know what that means, but um, this is the only wire and that goes down into this loom here and fires the high-speed fan. So this one talks to the relay, turns it on. Fans come on high, so you get high-speed cooling when you're overheating. So what I did, I uh, just cut the wire right here. I soldered in a piece of wire. I know it's confusing. I soldered a piece of wire and used, um, I installed this switch right here, which is actually, I had a spare one of, of this, which is a... Uh, it's a rear dome light, I believe. This still works, but what was in this slot was the uh, the rear headrests. You put them up manually, and then you push this button for them to go down. It's like crazy. Nobody ever uses that, you know. I mean, we might have used it once when we got the car. It said, "Wow, isn't that neat?" And it makes this big noise. It's kind of crazy. I don't know. So bypassed it. Just taped it off right there. What I did, uh, see this wire needs a ground. When I put a ground, you know, on it from like the battery key on, put a ground right there, the fans fire on high speed. So it has to be, uh, you know, something to do with completing the circuit by throwing a ground to the relay there. So, uh, so what I did with this uh, dome light, I figured out there's two wires that are common right here. Doesn't matter which way they go. Soldered a, a connector there, crimped a connector, soldered it right there. The other side, I needed a ground to complete that circuit. So I tapped into the ground of this headrest thing. It's got, it's got two grounds on it. Doesn't matter which one. I caught one. I sealed it off. Taped it off. This will just go back here. And so when I turn that switch on, uh, the fan will come on high speed uh, with the engine running or key to number two. All right, let's test it out. Okay, I'm back in the car. Keys on, batteries hooked up. I did the switcheroo. This fan noise that you hear right now, this is like a super low low speed fan. It's it's always been on. What I've read is uh, the resistor for the blower motor might be responsible for that, and I think it is. Um, anyway, so here's the the new fan switch. Key on. Hear that? Okay, good. Turn it off. Um, it doesn't work with the key out of it. See? Nice. 
and then fire this sucker up. We got a good 14 volts. You see your car is starting to overheat. That's when it's like getting, there's the 80. Wait, where's that phone, John? There's the 80 mark. This is all Celsius. The next one is not 90, it's 100. From what I've been told. So when it gets up to here, it starts climbing over. That's when you turn that fan on. And you look at it. It's really not pulling a bunch of voltage. Some people never hear their high speed fan. Hear how loud that is? And then I tested everything. Uh, K9 relay that that was there. It doesn't get hot. Plus, it's fused right there. If it gets over amped. These two fuses are for the uh, high speed and low speed relay. Here stops working. It's like 82, 86. Right here, that's the free resistor. That's the one that's going to get hot. 82, 94. Yeah, that's what's supposed to absorb the draw. Ceramic with a big old giant spring thing in it. Yeah, so still got plenty of good voltages. I'll try driving it. It'll be about 90 today. I'll drive it with the AC on. Now you can turn that off. Turn your AC on. <coughs> Excuse me. Turn your AC on. Auxiliary fan should come on. As soon as it gets warmed up and builds pressure, it'll come on. Come on, fans. Come on. It'll come on a, on a low speed. And that low speed is controlled by the low pressure switch at the receiver dryer. The low speed and high speed are two separate systems. Yeah, I got the uh, coolant sensor connected. It's basically doing nothing now. Cause I bypassed it. See the climate control unit. It works, it cools, it heats for the winter time. Blower motor works. The only thing that wasn't working right is the trigger for the high speed fan. In that, the reason I said most people don't see the high-speed fan working on their car at all. Maybe they live in a cold climate. It's for extreme temperatures. There go the fans, okay? So that's low speed. Then okay, I watch this. I'll uh, turn on the high speed. I can do that now. Really cool that condenser down. Doesn't seem to interfere with it. It's just voltage, right? A nice cold air. Let's see if there's any. So just, you know, energized the K9 high speed. I'm sure it will get hot. Everything seems to be between 80 and 90. Yeah, that thing is 100 degrees now. 
one side, 98 on the other. Everything's pretty warm here though, look at that. Before everything's heating up, they need to put them. So, that's really going to cool your condenser. <laughs> Still need a little R12 in the system, but. <clears throat> Up. It was about 12.5, 12.6. Anything below uh, 12.2 is not good. Got the AC going. Yeah. So that's my hack for the day. try doing a test drive today when it gets hot it'll be 90 here in uh, almost October Southern California so there's one thing I didn't check and I really didn't feel like checking you know I was like you got I put in new relays I tested everything I can get the fans to fire on that wire that ground wire apply ground to it and bam so it kind of tells you well, there's a grounding problem if you look at the if you look at the schematic for the K9 relay, there are no grounds on it. It's all power, 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 and then going to a device. The device is what has the ground. So somewhere there's a bad connection. I don't know. I don't know. I get, I've been working on it for two weeks, troubleshooting, looking at horrible schematics from the 90s. Now supposedly behind this kick panel is a junction full of wires. I can't find anywhere on schematics or anything mentioning that junction. I, maybe I just have incomplete schematics. But I think most of it is for power window, power window stuff, you know, the switches and all that. There's also, there's a massive ground connection behind the cluster here with about I don't know, maybe 10 to 15 different wires for grounds for, for all of this stuff here. There's another massive ground connector behind the console here. I don't feel like taking that all apart. So now I got 14 volts. Turn that fan on. Cool it. Turn the fan off. Cool, huh? Sweet. Oh well, yeah, I'll just <clears throat> been driving that around for about 10, 15 minutes. Um, car's really not. It's running pretty cool. It's 80 degrees outside. This problem with the overheating in this car, it's like when it's like 90 to 100 degrees. Got the AC on, low, voltage is good. So I can't really try my fan on. At least I tried it when I'm driving. It doesn't seem to like suck voltage. You know, overtax the alternator type of thing. That's, that's what you gotta worry about. Forget if this is a 60 amp or an 80 amp alternator. Wouldn't hurt to uh, Get the strongest alternator you can for your car so you're not taxing the system. But I mean, it's running pretty good. No complaints on driving it. Okay, so we got about.
That's normal right there. AC on, about 80 degrees outside. Voltage is 12.6. AC on high. Cooling fans are coming on, cycling at low speed. Let's let's see how fast it cools down with a high-speed fan. Voltage hanging in there. hear it. It's like really taxing the system. AC is a big draw. Yeah, you can hear that high speed fan. Fans. Not horrible noisy, but you can hear it. It's for sure. It's been about maybe a minute and a half. I think it's gone down a little bit. Voltage still good. Yeah, look how. Brought it down pretty fast. You turn your AC off and turn that high speed fan on. And it's off. And you're back to 13.4. So. So I think it, it does help, that high speed does help. Let's look at the engine, we'll take some readings. I gotta put the fuse box cover back on it. I just wanna be able to test everything. We'll see D. John. Not really hot. Not hot, not hot, not hot. I don't, I don't want to touch that one. That's where you gotta build up all your heat from the fan draw. So yeah, you're like 169, 135 surrounding area. So 100 and, that would hurt my hand. 159 on one side, so yeah, you know, it's heating up there at that one spot. That's the way it's supposed to be. That's why those wires always get crispy. 104, it's really not doing a whole lot. That's about all I can do for today. I'll put the cover to the fuse box back on and give the keys to my son and say, here. <laughs> uh, now next week's a good good opportunity. I think on Wednesday or Thursday, it's gonna be 97 degrees here. And that's, uh, I'll run another test. And uh, if something is different and it still overheats, I'll, just, I'll make another video, but I think this is the end for uh, part two of this overheating heating issue. So, yeah, so check your high speed function if you're having problems. Normal system, pull that two pin connector on the coolant, blue pin, middle of the head, pull it out, key on, high speed fan should activate. That means that the entire system is working as designed. If it doesn't work, then you've got some kind of a problem. You know, check the relay. Check these two fuses here. Check that relay right there. Um, I check. I think I checked uh, fuse number seven also. Um, 
supply power to the fans right here with a power probe if you can. It'll tell you that the fans are all good, you know, or just a 12 volt jumper just touching it right there should activate the fans. Well, you know, that's good. Um, I was able to use my power probe on one of the sockets on the high speed uh, relay. I forget which one, 87, I think it's 87. And it turned on the high speed function. So I knew everything from here to here was okay. Climate control unit could have issue. I did buy a used one off eBay. I was doing the same thing. I, I returned it. I had uh, five climate control units. All five of them did exactly the same thing. They wouldn't trigger the high speed fan. So, um, what does that tell you? It tells me that there's possibly something going on with the grounds. Since I can apply a ground signal to that one wire that I hooked the switch up to, that one wire is supposed to go to here. Um, activates activates on the dash like that. You could do that also without you know having any problems with the system. You just want to be able to turn that fan on manually, you know, and not wait for it to freaking boil over and blow your head gasket. So, anyways, this is John, and I'm done. Out of here.